everybody. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're some kind of smuggled exotic fruit existing in the imaginations of botanists, but willed into actual existence via the melodious timbre of David Attenborough's voice broadcast through a Bluetooth speaker in some faraway jungle, somewhere, sometime, someplace, don't ask. Mmm, contraband. Now, I can't promise you much with these seedlings, but I can promise you this. I will not keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer experiences joy, which is a feeling that uh, they are often unaccustomed to. Let's get to it. The title of this episode is, And So This Is 50. So it's probably obvious what the inspiration for this one was. Can you guess? Me! It was me! Myself! Me, myself and I. I wrote this upon turning 50, and I'm actually 51 now, but let's not talk about that. And while I can only say that for a couple more months, I'm just going to come right out and say this. The theme of this episode still tracks. I still mean every word. So if you're nearing that number, hmm, I hope it gives you hope. Because quite frankly, I've never felt more alive, more inspired, more motivated than I have since I hit that five and that zero. I hit it right in the middle of the COVID lockdown, so I didn't get to have a party. And maybe that's why I didn't feel so big. No one made a fuss. I don't know. But seriously, I do feel like I am on fire in a positive way. And I'm wondering if it's because... When you hit 50, you become acutely aware of time, the value of time. You don't want to waste it, you know? So I'm declaring 50 as the fire decade. If you don't feel it, light one under yourself. Experience the heat of action in the soles of your feet. Go, do, burn brightly, you incredibly flaming vessels. Flame on! Too much? Hmm. How about I read it to you and you can make up your own damn mind. Basic premise, life begins at, with, and because of fire. Let's burn it up, burn it down, let's set fire to this life with my dramatic reading of the post, and so this is 50. I don't know why I sang that. And what have you done? Stop it. This is 50. It wheels its little cart from the edge of my incredulity and into full view, the rickety wooden wheels telegraphing the true burden of its load. The load it bears is me, of course, of my life so far. This little heap of filthy laundry, multicoloured and comprised of fabrics of dubious origin and quality. These garments, soaked through with life and stitched with the familiar, bear the stench of who I have become over time. Is that all there is? I thought the pile would be bigger. My brain is on fire. It screams for more oxygen, more fuel, more heat. It toddler tantrums for more kerosene, as though the yield of 50 years drilling the creative crust of my earth is not nearly enough juice to sustain this blaze. This fire needs to be bigger, hotter. More words, more music, more work, more stink. This is 50. The green numbers on the clock blink at me. I blink back. It's 2am and an ember is hot and melting all the Tupperware lids of my brain. A dream incantation, a line that means nothing, is setting off proximity alarms. Sleep intruder alert. I blearily, wearily and knowingly mash my thumb to the microphone button on my phone and speak the line into existence. When I read this tomorrow, it will mean nothing, or will it? I will write it on a post-it and put it on the corkboard, stare at it, thinking one day that line will burn down a whole town. That line, that line, that line. Why do you write them down, idiot? No one will ever read them. The flames lick. The crackle snaps. I unpack my marshmallows for the brain conflagration. 
it's just the way it is. My dreams are bad lately. What if the dementia claims me as it did my mother, dragging me from the shore of this reality beach to the dark ocean of nothing, stealing my words, taking my expression? I must act now. Time is running out. Don't delay. This offer won't last. All things must go. We must throw all the furniture on the fire and wait to dig through the smouldering ashes. This is what it is, to be forever slightly mad, on the edge of, a desk of a mess of a display case on show. I must write it all down before it goes away. This is 50, and my brain is on fire. This chair is cheap. It is from Ikea and the pleather is sloughing off like desiccating skin. But it knows its role in this play. It growls like a fed bear is a dead bear grizzly from behind my desk, jaws hungry for my ass. Have you seen the price of an Aaron chair? It's ridiculous, even on sale, but it doesn't stop the creative corpse lashed to my witch's stake, shouting gibberish from the pyre. The chair holds the key. The posture fit SL back support, the harmonic tilt, the chest open, shoulders back of it. Yes, it is the key to sitting at the desk and doing the work and getting it done. Six months ago, it was the corkboard. The corkboard is the key! You cannot move forward without one! Next month, it'll be a felt mat for my desk or a monitor stand. There are no keys because there are no doors. There is only fire and the kindling at my feet. Fingers moving on a keyboard. Papermate flare medium scribbling on a 70G slash M to the power of two. These are bellows to the mind. All around me, shambles. My brain splayed and naked all over my desk. I inspect it with cool detachment. I will go back to the Pilot G2 eventually, but for now, if it bleeds, it reads. My fingertips are smudged grey with ink as I blow on the pages. Ideas come through turnstiles and I draft them like sheep. Good, bad, need shearing. In the field of my dreams, I chase one down and tackle it roughly before tying twine around its skinny ankles. Four seconds, that's a record. When I remove my knee from its neck, I see that it's not mine and cut the string with a sigh. Go, little one. Go find your rest with a better shepherd. Wait. The cinematographer is changing lenses. This is 50. Everything looks softer. I cry at the drop of a hat. Hats, when they land, can be very poetic, it seems. Dramatic, sad. Some days the sky is so clear and blue it makes me ache. Some days I play the same song over and over and over. Some days I just can't find my glasses and squint at words all day long. I am an untrained idea pilot in a plane with belligerent landing gear. I glide my Cessna in on a short beach and only lose one wing. Not a single lesson, I yell, jumping from the flaming wreckage while jotting down loose notes. I file them away for another day. What's the point of all these acrobatics? These aerials and loop-de-loops and falling leaf stalls? I have the consumption, inhaling more books, more film, more music and coughing with it. This sense of time running out is tickling the feet of my days. Focus is elusive, and despite making a one-book-at-a-time rule, I have four on the go. Too many books, not enough plus 1.50 readers. I eat music. All movies seem orange these days. Why is that? I am swept up and desaturated. My soundtrack swells and echoes. I am prone to self-sabotage, but they cannot take my pencils. They cannot douse my mind. They cannot take my freedom! Ugh. My brain is on fire. My heart slips its moorings. My proof of spirit is pure rocket fuel. This is 50. Why are you still writing your stupid little notes in your stupid little books in your stupid little handwriting? For your eyes only books with your heart only dreams and your time wasted pages. Why are you bothering? When you are dead, and you will be dead, no one will know what they mean. And who do you think will be looking at them anyway? There is no archivist coming in to document this shit. Your voice will die with you, shut between these pages as custom-made fire starters that have taken years to compress. I can't stop. My brain is on fire. 
50 years of fires and lightning and electrical storms and tornadoes and disasters inside, houses with roofs ripped off, charred ruins and melted curtains, a cow picked up and flung across my horizon, its soft eyes gazing into mine as if to say, why did you do this to me? I was just enjoying the grass. Why, why, why? It's just, what are you running away from? It's a comment I sometimes get about how much I ride my bike, and while I laugh when I hear it, I will confess I don't understand it at all. You don't ask the omelette maker why they're cracking eggs, do you? But it occurs to me now that riding and writing are very similar, and it's best not to look too closely at motivations for either. Sometimes things just are because they are. What am I running away from? I am not running away from anything. I am running toward it. I am running toward the infinite of the never get there. I am running with my whole body in flames and my brain flinging matches at the underbrush. I am a soft-scented log with a long burning shell rolling willingly into the coals. Words meaning life. They drift toward my inferno and evaporate poof, like tissue paper in the Bunsen burner of my dreams. I am orange and bright and incandescent. I'm crackling and snapping my bark off in large flaming chunks. Forever in the furnace, I run, I run, I run, laughing with the riotous cackle of an unrepentant witch. This is 50, and I am absolutely burning. And there you have it, today's Woman on Fire episode. I hope you come back for more. These little missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed this episode, please follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode and sign up to read my writing at janinemccrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love and I'll see you out there making stuff. <laughs>